Okay, we're going to work with the Navajo spindle. If you don't start with the leader, you're going to have to have a way of starting your wool onto your spindle. This is a technique that can be used in, with any spindle, not just the Navajo. You just get a bunch of wool and put it on the end of your spindle. This is a messy process. This is not something that is supposed to be neat or pretty. You just are looking to tangle this wool until it grabs a hold of itself and allows you to start twisting. So I'm just going to twist in the way that I was going. I want wool on all sides of the spindle. I'm going to go clockwise because that's how I always spin. It's good to be consistent like that so that you know you don't have to remember which way you were going last time you sat down at your spindle. I'm getting a little bit grabbed on here. It's not super firm. So it's possible to still lose it. That is totally okay. And just spin it. This is the hardest part. If you can get started, you can do it. We're going to draft that a little bit, let the twist walk up. The beginning of your spinning is not going to be really yarn you're going to count on using. All we're doing is getting going. So you can see I started off just with wool at the end. It's on the spindle here, this fuzzy part, but I want it in all directions around the spindle. And as I continue to get some of the wool drafted, I can start sending that glob of wool that I started with further down the spindle. Now the way this differs if you're using a drop spindle is that you're not going to be scooting it down the shaft like this. You're going to just be trying to get it twisted enough to allow you to wind on to your base. I think we have a pretty good start here, but we have to get it going enough until we have enough yarn to get down to the bottom and twist on to where we're not going to break. Why do we want to do this instead of using a leader? Well, how many times have you wanted to get started and can't find a leader yarn? Plus, it's just great to be able to do things the original way, in my opinion. I like to do things the way that the Navajos did if I'm going to be using a Navajo spindle, with the exception of I don't really care to sit on the floor anymore because I don't get up from the floor very well. So now we have a good start on our yarn. The leader is fully attached, and we're just going to get a lot of spinning going. To go clockwise, I am going to take the spindle, put it at the top of my thigh, and push it away from me. It's going to spin, and I keep doing that. Sometimes it looks like I'm going back and forth, but I'm really not. I'm staying in the same direction all the time. While I'm doing that, this is a long draw technique, and so you're going to draw while you're spinning. Put a little extra twist on it before you back up and wind on. You want to wind on so that the larger part, the wider part of your cone is going to be at the base by the whirl so that you can stay even and you don't get wobbly. Okay, so now we're back to twisting on. Long draw draft. Very nice. My arm only goes out so long, so when my arm is out as far as it'll go, I want to put on extra twist before I back up and wind on. Now typically Navajo spun yarn is not going to be the most consistent, most even yarn. It's going to depend a lot on the wool that you have and how evenly it drafts out in a long draw technique. This is Coopworth wool. You don't really want something with too short of a staple length. Anytime you're doing a long draw, you're going to want a pretty good staple length in order to do that well and not be frustrated and breaking it all the time. Certainly can spin with a shorter staple length. You can, even though some people will tell you can't. I'm not very good with the word you I can't. You can definitely do a spin and park technique, and this is great for spinners, whether you're using a Navajo spindle or a drop spindle. Get extra twist, park, so you stop, and then draft your fibers like this. Now the where it can get tricky with the Navajo is if you if your twist gets down below the spindle. You can see this Navajo spindle is done in the traditional manner. It does not have a hook on the end. The hook is not necessary. This is something that that is a, something that people just think they need that. How will the yarn stay on if you don't have a hook when I drop it? Well, in this instance, with the Navajo, it's spun like a spindle on a great wheel or any other type of flat spindle. You're spinning off the tip. You're only trying to get the yarn twisted, and that's happening all along the, the shaft here. And so you're going to feel a pop 
if you, I don't know if you can see that while I'm spinning it, but my yarn pops off the end every time. It's going to feel very strange to you at first if you're used to spinning on a wheel or on a drop spindle or any type of supported spindle that does not have um, just the spindle if you're used to the hook. But once you get used to that little pop, 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 pop with every rotation, you know that's normal. That's not a problem. You know that that's just how Navajo spindles operate in the traditional fashion. Certainly you can add a hook to it. To me, that's just another step I have to take every time I wind on. I'm not a real big fan of extra steps. So that's the Navajo spindle. This Navajo spindle comes with a base, which makes it very easy um, to spin. If you do not have a base, you can use a bowl. The bottom of a planter works well. I like the base because I also have a stand here, so when I'm finished spinning, I can just stick my spindle in there. I take my wool and stick it on the top. That keeps it out of the way and it'll be waiting for me next time I want to use it.